Good day, my name is Thomas Seller from the University Heart Center Freiburg Bad Trotzingen. I'm talking about the treatment of acute lymph ischemia. These are my potential disclosures. I have nothing to disclose related to this presentation. The etiology of acute lymph ischemia is mainly native thrombosis based on an atherosclerotic lesion or embolism mainly related to atrial fibrillation. These are the three clinical categories. Rutherford grade one is a viable limb where we have enough time for diagnosis and treatment. Grade 2a and b are indications for immediate revascularization and grade 3 is an irreversible damaged limb where major amputation is the only treatment possibility. The latest guidelines released this year are coming from the European Society of Vascular Surgery. This is the treatment algorithm. It's generally recommended to apply heparin and oxygen before starting the diagnostic procedure. After that, we should use either CTA or duplex ultrasound in order to localize the occlusive area. And depending on the urgency of the clinical condition of the patient, we have to select the treatment. In case of revascularization, it's either open surgical revascularization or endovascular. These are the recommendations from 2011 released by the European Society of Cardiology. Very similar to the recent surgical guidelines, urgent revascularization is recommended in stage 2 acute lymph ischemia and the kind of revascularization is re related to the presentation of the patient Surgery is more frequently recommended in stage 2b as long as a surgical suite is available immediately. Otherwise, endovascular is also indicated in this particular stage. What's the background of this recommendation? In most institutions, thrombolysis is still primary treatment modality and thrombolysis needs time. If available, mechanical thrombectomy should be used because it's reducing overall the time to reperfusion. Important to note is that ultrasound should be used to guide arterial excess in order to avoid bleeding complications during local lysis. Why local lysis? It has been shown that local lysis is as effective as surgical revascularization with regard to limb salvage. However, one study did show a higher one-year mortality rate for the surgical cohort. On the other hand, there was a higher recurrence rate after local lysis in the lysis cohort as compared to surgery. If we perform local lysis, the lytic catheter should be placed into the thrombus because application of lysis proximal to the occlusion is less effective. Adjunctive GP2B3A blockage application can enhance the speed of local lysis as proven by the PROMPT study. This is the time to lysis significantly reduced after REOPRO application compared to placebo. In addition, the percentage of patients free from surgical revascularization or amputations had been higher as compared to placebo application. Ultrasound enhanced thrombolysis is very popular mainly in the US. I don't believe in it. For me it's voodoo. I have not seen any proof of concept so far. Surgery is mainly indicated by central occlusive disease like here, a thrombus in the left common iliac artery. Mainly Fogarty thrombectomy is performed. If this is not successful, it can be a bypass surgery as alternative. In this particular case, a big thrombus could be removed simply by Fogarty maneuver from this common iliac artery. This is a case example for an endovascular procedure, of a bilateral thrombotic occlusion of the femoral bifurcation. I did use an H French Rotrex system, which is the most powerful mechanical thrombectomy device to date. I started on the right side 
uh, treating the SFA and the deep femoral artery. However, due to the high degree of organization of the thrombus, I was not able to remove the entire thrombus. Therefore, I decided also to use directional atherectomy followed by kissing balloon angioplasty in order to tap flow. The same was basically done on the right side, rotorex thrombectomy followed by directional atherectomy and kissing balloon angioplasty. Some residual thrombus remained, but flow was good. However, there was some thrombus downstream in the poplet heel. This was also treated with rotational thrombectomy with finally a good outflow into the posterior tibial artery. Um, the anterior tibial artery had been chronically occluded. Another case example, an embolic occlusion of the distal popliteal artery treated with a six French uh, rotary system. If mechanical thrombectomy devices are not available, aspiration thrombectomy is also a very successful tool in particular in distal occlusions, embolic occlusions of the popliteal artery or the bifurcation of the tibiopineal trunk and the anterior tibial artery as shown over here in this case example. One word to post-procedure supervision of the patient. Every patient in a Rutherford II acute limb ischemia condition needs intensive care supervision post-procedure because of the risk of the development of a compartment syndrome. This is common sense and if a compartment syndrome develops it's an indication for an emergent four compartment fasciotomy and if fasciotomy is indicated it should be done immediately there should be no delay otherwise it could result in an irreversible neuro damage with this i thank you for your attention